is going to be on interpolation. The last week we talked about core fitting. So in core fitting, given a set of data points, we want a curve that would be able to explain or show the general trend of the data. It can be a linear, we talked about linear curves, uh, which where you can just use a straight line to fit the data point. Then we talked about non-linear models, um, like the log bidding model, the inverse model, or the lean, uh, natural log bidding, or the exponential that you can use to fit the curve. So in this class, we'll be talking about interpolation. So interpolation is simply giving some set of data points. You want to be able to determine, for instance, if you are giving some set of known data points and you want to be able to interpolate, uh, you want to find the value of, of some specific values, um, the point at which is unknown. For instance, like in this graph now, if you are giving, you're giving the set of data points, if this is X and this is the function at X, so you're giving these two points, these two points are known. But when, if you're asked to interpolate, like if you're giving like this point, if this point is two and this point is three, and you're asked to find the value of the function at maybe 2.5, you're not giving 2.5, so, uh, so this class is on interpolating, finding the value of a function, giving some sets of data points that are known, and you want to find uh, the value of the function at the point that is unknown. So that is interpolation. So we can, in order to interpolate, we are going to be using a polynomial. So in, in first other polynomial, you just use, it's just a straight line, using a straight line to connect the two points. So for, for the first other uh, polynomial, you are just given two points, this point and this point, and you want to find any value of the function at any point in between. So we can use a straight line to just connect those two points together and um, find the value of the function at the point we want to find. So we can use a, a uh, this is a uh, first order polynomial. So it's a straight line. You can use a second order polynomial or you can use multiple others like third, fourth, and fifth polynomial. So for first order polynomial, you're just given two points and you want to find the value of the function at, at any point in between. For the second order polynomial, we are given three points, three known points, and we want to find the value of the function at any of the points in between, which we are not given. Then for third order polynomial, you are given four known points and you want to find the value of the function at any point in between which you are not given. So the, the first order is simple, but it's less accurate as we'll be looking at. And the second order is much more accurate than the first order polynomial. And simply, if the third order is much more accurate than the second order. So basically, this is the structure of a, a polynomial. So if you are giving, at least you need two points in order to interpolate. You cannot just interpolate just using a single point. We need two points to interpolate. So, and if you are giving two points, that means that you can only uh, use the first other polynomial. If you are giving three points, you can use a, uh, a second other polynomial to, to get a curve that would allow you to interpolate. 
and if you are giving four points, you are going to, if you are giving four points, that means you can use a third order polynomial to interpolate. So generally, um, you're giving n plus one data points and n other polynomial. So if you are given two data points, it's just a single other polynomial you can you can derive. If you are given three points, it's the second other polynomial. So if you are given um, four points, if you are given four points, it's a third other polynomial you can derive, which you are going to use to interpolate. So there are different methods. And the first method will be, there are two methods we we'll actually consider. We, uh, the first one is divided difference in tabulating polynomials, while the second one is a Lagrange polynomial. So for um, Newton's divided difference, um, we have different, um, different methods based on the order of the polynomial. So we start with linear interpolation. So like I said, in linear interpolation, you have two points. The least number of points you'll be giving is two points. You're given two points and you can just, since you are given two points, it's just a first order polynomial you can use. And the first order polynomial is a linear line. This is just simply a straight line that you can use. So like I said, you're giving this two points A, this point A, so you're giving the value of the function at this value of X. Then you're giving the value of the function at this value of X, and you want to um, interpolate, like you want to know probably at this particular value, X. You want to know the value of the function. So in linear interpolation, you're just simply using a straight line to connect um, the two points you are given. So from this particular graph, um, using similar triangles, so here you have a triangle. So there's a triangle here, that's fx1, f x0, then x0 and x. So this particular triangle, then you have this particular triangle. So using uh, similar triangles, using similar triangles, you're going to equate this triangle with this triangle. So this first triangle here, is this fx1, you can see fx1, fx, f1x, sorry, f1x, the minus f, fx0, divided by x minus x0. So this is the first triangle here. In the middle, then my cursor is, then for the second triangle is, uh, the all of this. So this is the first triangle. Then this is the second triangle. So using similar triangles. So this is the, the second triangle is f x one. So you have f x one, then f x naught, then the value of x at this particular function. When you equate it together, then we want to get x. Uh, we want to get f one x because want to, you know the value of the function at x naught, you know the value of the function at x one. But uh, a question can be given that you should find the value of the function at any point in between, say x. So using this relationship, we can get uh, f one x by just making from this relationship, making f1x the subject of formula, we are going to arrive at equation two. We are going to arrive at equation two. So simply using this formula, 
we can be able to interpolate um, that's linear interpolation. So linear interpolation is the easiest. So let's use an example. So in this example, we are asked to eliminate, uh, so to estimate lean of two using linear interpolation. So for linear interpolation, um, for linear interpolation, we have two points that is going to be given to us. So you are giving lean one as zero, and you are giving lean six as 1.79. So this is the value of x. Then the value of the function at this value of x is zero. Then the value of the function at x is equal to six is this. So simply x naught is equal to one. Then x one is equal to six. Then fx fx naught. So fx naught is equal to zero. Then f fx one fx1 is equal to 1.79 from this. Then x0 is 1. x0 is 1. Then x1 is 6. Is 6. So we, are, we have two points, like I said, for linear interpolation, we are given two points. So this is the first point, and this is the second point. I know the value of the function at the first point. I know the value of the second function uh, at the second point. So simply using this equation, we derive. So we want to, the question says that we should get link two. And link two is the x, so two is the x we want to calculate. And we want to find the value of the function at x is equal to two. So we simply put in the, four, uh, the values we know into the uh, formula we derived. And when we put it in, we get this value. So using linear interpolation. And in the question, we are told that the true value is 0 0.69, the true value of lean two is uh, the natural logarithm of lean two is 0 0.69. And from the interpolation, when I started, I said lin linear interpolation is less accurate because it's just the first other polynomial you are using to draw the interpolation line. So it's less accurate. So this is the true value and this is the value we got from the interpolation. From this graph, yeah, like you're using a straight line, but for this particular function, the function is actually like a curve this way. So you can see the difference between the, uh, the actual value and the real, the actual value, but for in linear interpolation, it's just a straight line. So you, the accuracy is very, very limited. So in order to be much more accurate, we need to uh, probably fit a second order polynomial, use a second order polynomial, third order polynomial to increase the accuracy. So for linear interpolation, we got this value, um, but in the question, this is the true value. So we can measure the true error. So the error is like 48%, which is, um, which is very, very uh, large. So, so in order to, another way you can in, improve the error because the error is very, very large here. Yeah. And the reason why the error is large Apart from it being a, apart from you using a linear line to interpolate, 
the reason why the error is large is because the interval is also very big because you have x naught is one then your x one x naught is one and your x one is six so this interval is too big six minus one right that's five so if you're using linear interpolation it's better to have a very a small margin so if like this and this are very close your uh your error is going to be less so let's try that so in this question we are asked to repeat the procedure but using a smaller interval so instead of using x naught is equal to one then x one is equal to six we want to use x one is equal to one and x naught is equal to one and x one is equal to four so we want to use a smaller interval so if we do that instead of using this very large interval if we do that we'll get this value of uh, a value of x which we are looking for the value of the function at this value of two and when we measure the error the true error still remains 0 0.69 then when we measure the error we the the true error has reduced previously it was 48 percent now it dropped to 33 percent so the error is still large but it reduced a bit because we're using a shorter time interval so that's linear interpolation is the simplest but as you can see it's uh it has a very large error then uh we can make use of quadratic interpolation so in quadratic interpolation they we are fitting a second order polynomial into it into the uh we are using a second order polynomial so and for second order polynomial you need three points so for first order polynomial which is linear interpolation you need two points but for second order polynomial like this graph you need three points so for a third order polynomial you need four points so for quadratic in interpolation we are expressing the polynomial that we want to use to interpolate in this form so this is the intercept so this is the first slope and this is the second slope so we want to so this is the way we are expressing the polynomial. Then we want to find the value of B0, B1, and B2. So that's what we want to find. And meanwhile, the three points we are giving, we are giving, um, we are giving X0 and we are giving X1. So we want to, based on the values we are giving, we want to be able to find the value of the function at x so at this value of x so in order to first of all calculate your b naught because you you need to you need to get this value of b naught b1 okay okay there is a question is linear interpolation always a first order okay the answer to your question is that linear interpolation is simply a straight line. So for linear interpolation, it's first order polynomial you are you are fitting. Is a is a is is a yes, is a straight line. A linear interpolation is like a straight line and is also first order polynomial. So first order polynomial is just a straight line. So second, from second order upwards, it becomes like a curve. So a first order polynomial is just simply a straight line. So in quadratic in interpolation, you are fitting a curve or a parabola through the through the data points we are giving 
with the intention of finding the value of the function at a particular point or depending on the question. So this is a this is a second order polynomial or a parabola. I want to get I want to get this B naught, B1 and B2. Because if we have this this coefficient, then simply we just put it into this parabola to get the value of the function we are looking for at this value of x. So x naught and x1 is known. So in order to we'll do some proving, in order to prove that we just expand this equation three. If you expand it, you will get this. Then collecting the coefficient together. So this is the coefficient. Uh, these are the constants without coefficients. So these are the constants with the x coefficient. And these are the constants without, with the x squared coefficient. So after that, after collecting the constants together, then you are going to equate it with this polynomial. This polynomial is a second order polynomial. So the second order polynomial has three coefficients. So when you equate this and this together, we get the value of A naught. We get the value of A1. Then and we get the value of A2 using all of this together. So for B naught, to get B naught for equation three, just equate X to be equal to X naught. So this is our equation three here. This is the equation three. Let me just bring it down. Remember, wanted want to get B naught, B1, and B2. So to get B naught now, to get B naught, we would say let X be equal to X naught. So in place of X, we are going to put X naught. I am just proving. So in place of X, we put X naught in place of X. I'll put X naught. So if we do that, then in place of this X here, we put X naught. So if you do that, B naught is equal to FX naught. So we've gotten the value of B naught. Then to get B1, because we need this all these coefficients to get the value of b1 we are going to in place of x in place of x we replace it with x1 in equation 3 so we replace this x here with x1 then this x here with x1 then this x here with x1 then if you do the algebra you get your b1 as this particular function then similarly to get the value of b2 you're going to use this particular equation here Let's copy this equation here. Then in place of in place of x2, in place of x, you equate x is equal to x2. So let me just copy it. So in place of x, you're going to put in x2. Then in place of x, you put in x2, then here x2, then here x2. 
then when you make bit uh, to the subject of formula, you are going to arrive at this equation. So these three equations we've got in equation four, five, and six. That is the, you know, I told you that we need B0, we need B1, and we need B2. So these are the equations that we're going to use to calculate for B1, B0, B1, and B2. Then we are simply going to put it into, after we've gotten B notes using those equation B1 and B2, we've already derived the second order polynomial, the quadratic polynomial. Then we can evaluate the value of the function at the value of X that is given to us. So let's do an example. So like I said, we are asked to fit a second order polynomial to the three points used in example one. So in example one, we add three points. Our x naught was one, our x one was four, and our x three was six. Then we're also given the value of the function at x naught. We're given the value of the function at x one, at x one. Then we're given the value of the function at x two. And the question says that we should calculate for link two. So we are giving this one, four, six, but we are not giving two. So we, the question says we should calculate for link two and we are going to use a second order polynomial. So we are going to fit the quadratic polynomial between all these three points to find that quadratic polynomial. Then after that, we are going to find B1, B0, B1, B2. Then putting the values of B0, B1, and B2, we find we're going to use it to evaluate the value of the function at x is equal to 2. So in this case, x is equal to 2. So when we simply use the formula we derived, so B0 is equal to f of x0 from that equation we derived, and it's simply 0. f of x0 is simply 0. Then B1, this was the equation we derived. Then putting in the, all these parameters, we got B1 at 0 0.46. Then B2, um, this is the equation we derived. Then putting all the parameters of the question, we got minus 0 0.51. We have all the coefficients we need. So now, putting this, so given this equation, so putting all the coefficients we have now, we get this uh, polynomial, this quadratic polynomial. So we want to evaluate the, fun the value of the function at x is equal to 2. So that's the question. So simply, so this is the, um, the polynomial we arrived at. So we're going to put two here, two here, and two here. And when we dig that, we got 0 0.5658. So this is the second order polynomial. And I said the second order polynomial is much more, uh, it has less error than compared with the compared with the first other polynomial. So in question one, the true error was given to us. The true error was given to us as this, so we can calculate the error. And the error is 18.4%, which is lower. Remember when we just use this a linear, a linear polynomial, we got, uh, when we use the linear polynomial, we got 48.3%. But when we reduce the margin at uh, the interval, we got 33%. But using a second order polynomial, the error reduced from 33% to 18%. So the, the error is much more accurate as the order of the polynomial increases. So we want, in this section, we want to find the general form for the polynomial because now we did the first order polynomial, we did the second order polynomial. 
So we want to get the general expression for depending on the order of polynomial, we want to determine or the number of points we are given. So if you are given two points, is only one polynomial, uh, is the first other polynomial you can fit. If you are given three points, you can fit the second other polynomial, that is the maximum. And if you are given um, four points, you can fit the third other polynomial. So fit an nth other polynomial to n point plus one data point. So if this is the structure of the polynomial, if this is the structure of the polynomial, then um, we need to evaluate this coefficient, b naught, b1, and b2 up to bn. So we define b naught as f of x naught. So sim sim simply put, b naught is simply a function of x naught. Then b1 is a function of x1 and x naught. So looking at this one we derived here, b1, so to calculate for b naught, you only need x naught. So that's why we said it's a function of x naught. To calculate for b1, you need x1 and x naught. That's why we said it's a function of x1 and x naught. To calculate for b2, you need x1, you need x2, and you need x naught. So that's why we said b2 is a function of x2, x1, and x naught. So that's what is simply here. So b naught is simply a function of x naught only. So to calculate b naught, you only need x naught. So b2, uh, sorry, b1, to calculate b1, you need x1 and x naught. To calculate b2, you need x2, x1, and x naught. Then it increases. To calculate b3, you need x3, x2, x1, and x naught. And to calculate, it increases like that. Then to calculate bn, you need xn, xn minus 1, xn minus 2, then it reduces to x naught. So that's um, simply it. So f of x naught is going to be given in the question. Then f of x1 and x naught is simply this function here. So in place of x1 and 0, and we are using i and j. So f of xi comma xj is simply given by this relationship. So if you look up here, and because for b1, let me just copy it. For b1, yeah. So I said b1 is a function of x1 and x0. So if you look at the structure here, is the same thing with the structure here. So that's why it simply says that the function of x i comma x j is given by this relationship then this particular function because to calculate b2 you need x2 x1 and x naught so the general trend is that for x i x j and x k obviously you need x i you need x k and you need x x j and you need x k then the relationship this is the general relationship so in order to calculate this function it's of this format so is f of x i comma x j minus f of x j comma s k divided by x i minus x k so there's a if you look at this equation and this equation is like a trend so you have x i here, you have x j here, then you have x i minus x j. So to calculate this function, you need x for the denominator is x i minus x k. So the first one minus the last. Then f of x i comma x j, which is what you got here. f of x i comma x j. Then f of x j comma x k, which is the last two terms then divided by xi minus xk. Then to get 
let me just include uh, if to say we wanted to get copy if we wanted to get f of x i x j x k then uh, Uh, let me so f of x i x j x k then s k then x l if you wanted to get this xl so this relationship is going to simply be this f of x i is simply going to be f of x i x j s k minus f of x j x k then x l X comma L um, so it's going to simply this then it's going to be X I minus X L so if you can see there's a general trend so to calculate B naught you simply need fx naught, and fx naught is going to be given in the question. To calculate b1 is f, uh, sorry, to calculate f of x of i comma x of g, that's for b1. You need is f of x i minus f of x j divided by x i minus x j. Then to calculate f of x i x j x k, is simply f of x i comma x j minus f of x j comma s k divided by x i minus s k. Then that's just the general trend. So to calculate, so this is for b one. Then this is for so this is for b one, and this is for b two. So this is b two. Then here is b3 so here is b3 then bn sorry i'm stopping now so join me